Hello everyone and welcome to Strategy Gaming Dojo where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. Now today we're going to continue on with one of those games. It is Gary Grigsby's War in the East. Now this is episode number five. In this episode we are going to tackle commanders and command and support units. And you may say, well, what do those two things have to do with each other? Actually, in this game, quite a bit. And I find that support units is maybe the single most um, confusing topic that people have when they're trying to learn the game or play the game, how support units work, how you move them around. Um, and we're going to go through all of that. We're going to go through both the push method and the pull method. Now you have no idea what that means, but we will go through both. And by the end, I think you will be able to understand you know, how support units work in this game. It's actually a very flexible system. I think part of what is confusing about it, ironically, is that they've tried to make it easier by having an, having an automated way that you can do it and then also having a manual way that you can do it. Uh, but I think that causes all kinds of confusion. But we're going to go through all of that. But first of all, you may notice, hey, wait a minute, my screen, it doesn't look like it has through the rest of the tutorial. And that is true. I have pulled up the 1943 through 45 scenario. And the reason I've done that is because I want to show you how command is structured, how your headquarters are going to be arrayed as you move into the game, as you get past the initial turns and you're moving through the Soviet Union, how it would normally look for your structure of headquarters units, okay? And so I am down here by Kursk and you can see we have a headquarters unit selected. Now remember, it's shift Z to get these lines here, the orange line going to its direct headquarters and the blue lines going to the units it commands. Uh, the yellow are uh, units or headquarters units that are on the same level as this headquarters. So if we did click on this headquarters unit over here, you will see, well, Ah, come on now. Um, anyway, the point being is you would see that those units underneath here are on the same level. You could see it here. It, this is a core headquarters. The three X's give it away. And so all of those yellow markings are just core headquarters on the same level. Um, so this is the smallest, is smallest the right word? This is the lowest on the totem pole. Let's put it that way, headquarters unit. And that is a core headquarters. So we have divisions and I've traced this out before. And as you know, I'm just such a wonderful artiste here. You have divisions. These are divisions. These are your combat units. They are the base unit in the game. Those divisions are commanded by core headquarters. So let's just do core HQ because there are no core combat units, they're HQs. So a core HQ, okay? And a core HQ to have command, good command as I call it, over these divisions must be within five hexes of those divisions, okay? And all of these apply, so that's all good. Now above the core headquarters, you are going to have army headquarters. So division to core to army. Army HQs need to be within 15 hexes of what they are commanding, and they can they can either command multiple core headquarters or they can command independent divisions, okay? So they don't have to command a core. They can independently command a division, although I will say I tend to not like that 
the f even though they can do it, so you know this army had well, let's get off the drawing function with my beautiful drawings and let's go look at the ninth army. So we're at the ninth army headquarters here, the four X's. It is an army headquarters. It can and does often command things other than just cores. All right. Now, here, if we look at attached units, so I just clicked on this, you can either look at attached support, which we're going to get to later in the episode, or attached units. And you can see here, it commands one, two, three, four, five cores, okay? But it also commands the 236th Infantry Division. And I can show you that if we click on, let's get off these other headquarters and just have this selected here, the Army Headquarters. It'll show you everything it's commanding. And then you see this, which is, looks like a regimental unit. This is the 236th Infantry Division. This Army Headquarters is commanding that directly. I generally don't like to do that because if this get, even though it can get up to 15 hexes away from the headquarters, you start to get penalties for various functions, administrative functions that a headquarter performs for what it commands. So these divisions or regiments here, I like to always have them attached to core headquarters. Um, you know, in this case, it would be a core headquarters probably in the same army, although we could attach it to this as well if we play administrative points. All right. Um, so you have army headquarters. Let's go back to the army headquarters here. That is our next level up. Again, it can, well, let's go here. It can be up to 15 hexes away from the cores or divisions or regiments, whatever else is underneath it, away from things it commands, and they are still in good command. All right, back to the pencil we go. We've got divisions, we've got core HQs, we've got army HQs, which we've now looked at. And as you saw, I mean, this this army HQ is commanding, you know, five different core HQs, okay? Above armies, you have army group HQs. And in uh, the German, if we're just talking about the Germans, the Germans have three army groups. They have army group north, army group center, and army group South. Now I'm going to get that off the screen as fast as I can because boy is that ugly. But let's go click on this and let's go find its Army Group headquarters. And here we have it. It is Army Group Center. So we'll click off this so we're only seeing the things that splinter off of Army Group Center. You can see all, you know, there is a ton that Army Group Center, obviously, is going to be commanding. And if we ever want to look at what that is, we right click here um, and you can see the attached units. Now, again, don't get confused here. There are two different things that you can see here, either attached units or attached support. Attached support, we're going to talk about later in this episode. Attached units is what you want to see. This is what it's actually directly commanding. Uh, so we see a, a panzer division. We have some field training divisions, uh, you know, infantry division. You know, it's got a bunch of stuff. The 7th Hungarian Corps. Uh, it's got an air, you know, the Luftlot, which is an air group. Uh, it, there's a lot of stuff that Army Group Center is commanding. And as we get deeper into this, we'll talk more about what would be ideal as we move up and down the chain for command. But for now, I just want to show you the basic command structure. So here's Army Group Center. Army Group Center needs to be within 45 hexes of anything it commands. So let's go back and get on the Ninth Army. 
the ninth army group you see here 45 hexes it's within 23 of army group center so it is also in command and it's so important in this game to keep units in the proper command for supply reasons administration reasons uh, for sort support unit help which we'll be talking about um, for it is maybe the most important part of the game keeping these things in command because you have got to keep your units in supply or they became become essentially worthless now let's click on army group center and we'll go to the final army headquarters unit which is okh and everything as you can see looks back to okh as its ultimate um headquarters so okh if we right click on it these are the attached units we see all of these reserve divisions security divisions uh, army group north army group center army group south army group a because down in the south eventually it splits into army group south splits into army group a and army group b but you see all of the units that ultimately trace their headquarters all the way back to okh so just doing it in reverse okh and we'll we'll go somewhere else let's go up here okh is commanding this unit i'm gonna say it's army group north and i would be correct so it's commanding army group north you see here army group north 41 of 90 it traces back to okh it's in good command so that's great uh, now let's trace off of army group north down to an army and that army let's just pick this one the 16th army it needs to be within 45 of army group north well it's only six away here all right so the army is here the 16th army now the 16th army then commands these core headquarters all right these core headquarters then command their units now when you get down here to these core headquarters they can be stacked with the units that can happen now you can lose leaders they can be killed uh, that can happen uh, so you have to be a little careful about that uh, I will say it's fairly rare if they're stacked. Now, it's not nearly as rare if they're all out on their lonesome as a headquarters here, but you're well uh, well protected, right? I mean, the, the Soviets to come, would not be able to come around here. Zone of control uh, from these two, you know, you see this is the start of our zone of control. They would not be able to get around and get back around here. Uh, so the headquarters is well protected here and you've got it close to all of its subservient divisional units. And you can tell their divisions, the double X will tell you those are divisions. All right, here's another one, same idea. And again, you know, these have got to be within 15 of the army. These have got to be within five of their core headquarters if they're within five they're perfectly good you know generally um if you want them a little closer that's fine uh, honestly if you have them this close it, it's going to be fine you know it could have some effect on supply a little bit let's say if they're five away you know if you can keep them within one two or three that's probably the best if you can't and you got to leave them at five it's not the biggest deal in the world okay um and so that is the command structure. Now, every one of your headquarters has a general or has a commander, all right? That commander, you know, I say general, that's such an American, it, it, it's, set that aside. It has a commander, okay? And you can see that commander right here. Now, every commander in the game has eight stats. And those stats are very important. And you can always come here when you right click on a headquarters, you can always come here and go look at the commander. So Honey here, he is the commander of the 8th Corps. All right. And now this is 
these this is these are the eight skill ratings for Honey. Political, and this is all on one to nine. I've never seen a 10. I don't think 10s exist. They're one to nine. And they will be taking ratings checks. Now the manual says that for every turn, you know, logistics uh, for combat, there are thousands of leadership checks. Is that an exaggeration? Well, I don't know. I don't know the exact algorithm that they use, but it does point out whether it's a thousand or it's a hundred, it does point out how important these leadership skills are, okay? And so again, there are eight. Political, now political goes into how hard it is to dismiss this commander. Uh, now he is a general. So let me back up and just say one thing before we jump into the skills. Now I drew these things out, division, core, Okay, now you have the following, um, I, I guess, ratings, or uh, that's not true. You have the following uh, hierarchy of commanders, all right? You have what's called a general major that's at the bottom, okay? So GM, this is in the axis. The Soviets are a little different. Then you have a general lieutenant then you have a general then you have a general oberst as they called it go and then you have a general field marshal okay this is how the axis command structure is set up general major general lieutenant general General Oberst, General Field Marshal. Um, now, as you might imagine, it depends, you know, this, uh, this rank has an effect on what they can command. So generally, General Majors are not ready to command anything. You have a pool of them, and as you have leaders that die or get promoted to other ranks, the general majors will then move up into those ranks. General lieutenants generally are going to command corps, generals, armies. General oberst are going to uh, be army groups, and field marshals, really OKH, are army groups, you know. A field marshal is the top. It's like in the American military, like a five-star general, right? Um, and so we'll see here, Honey is a general. So he's right in that middle rank. So he's well qualified to uh, be leading a corps. And you can go down to a general lieutenant would also be qualified to lead a corps. A general major is not yet Okay, now the game will automatically do promotions. Um, it can also automatically dismiss your generals. And so if you have a general that loses several battles in a row, OKH or quote unquote Hitler back in the back may yank him off stage and dismiss him. They can also promote them automatically. You can also help dismiss generals, well I say help, you can dismiss generals if you play, pay a certain amount of political points. Now, uh, or I shouldn't say political points, administrative points, okay? And you can see that right here. His dismissal cost is eight administrative points. That is based on his political rating. And that political rating will have a big effect on whether he gets promoted he can get promoted automatically, whether he gets dismissed automatically. The manual goes, into, goes on to say they can be dismissed and executed if uh, they fail a political check. Uh, so this goes into the general's uh, relationship with German high command and potentially the Fuhrer. So this is an eight out of nine. So he is quite a political beast, Mr. Haney is. That's why it's a little bit, you know, this is a little high for a core commander to dismiss. 
Uh, let's, well, I say that, I don't know. Let's go check out here. Let's see who else, oh, you gotta get off him. Let's go up here to this core, which is, well, shoot, you gotta get out of the, all of that. Let's go up here to the 10th core, okay? This is Sponheimer, Sponheimer. He's also a political eight, and his dismissal cost is also an eight. As we move into the war here, you'll notice a lot of the German uh, generals have a pretty good political score. Let's try this one. This is Locke. Locke is a six, and it costs a six to get rid of him at the core level. Let's look at the army level, okay? Um, at the army level, here we have Lindemann. All right, let's right click here, go look at Lindemann. Lindemann is a six. Now this costs an 11 for administrative points. So now you're starting to kind of see the system, right? As you go up the chain, it's gonna cost more to dismiss and it's also based on their political skill, okay? Um, now you're, one thing you are seeing here is this 6.4 what is that? Well, that is an average of this general's morale, initiative, administrative, and for a ground general, it would be mech and infantry. So it's these five numbers mixed. The political does not go into it because what this is trying to show you is kind of how good this general is, not necessarily how political they are. So it goes to morale, initiative, administration, mech and infantry. If it's an air general, then it would be these three again, because they do affect the air war. Um, and But then it would just be air, right? We have naval, not really something we need to worry about at all. So you really just need to worry about these seven skills and for how good the general actually is, these, you know, either five or these three and air for an air commander. I should call them commanders. Um, okay, so morale is the next one. Now morale has a, a lot of effect on your combat value and the recovery of your units after combat. So the higher the general is rated in that, it's gonna go into the calculation of combat value and it's gonna go into the uh, how well that unit that's just been in battle recovers, all right? So morale, I told you before when we talk about units, morale is probably the most important component uh, so, you know, we go look at this unit here, the 58th Infantry Division, uh, their morale is 68 right now. Um, our general has a six, our commander has a six. And so there will be all kinds of roles that the, that the game does to see how well they recover after a battle, how many men they lost, how many men they lose from attrition, which also is their administrative, how good their uh, commander is at administrative tasks. Um, but I'm just kind of bouncing around here looking at different ones. Clayful is a 5.2, which is not too great. I can tell you as the Germans, you have much better command ratings in general. Uh, you really, really want, you know, generals or commanders that are a six or above these 5.2s if anything down in the fours you've got to try to replace uh, of course it depends how many administrative points you have but to the best of your ability you've got to try to get those guys moved out because they're really going to hurt you uh, from a command perspective so we'll look at clayful to keep going down here uh, Kleffel, I think, is probably the better way to pronounce it. His initiative is a five. Initiative goes into uh, movement, so it could start to affect how many movement points you have. It also goes into how many times a unit can fire, the accuracy of that fire, how well they do when they fire at enemy units. And so initiative really goes into how well they fight. If you played other war games, you know, initiative is sort of, usually means you get the first shot. So if your commander has a better initiative score, it's gonna get the first shot. Now the manual 
in War in the East doesn't necessarily say that you get the first shot, but it does talk about more shots and accuracy of those shots. And so that's what initiative goes into. Administrative, you know, this is what you would expect. It's supply. It's how well your units underneath this commander are getting ammunition, supply, fuel, goes into those items okay now oh and then i should finish this off by saying mech and infantry these are direct fighting skills so of course you're going to want your panzers to have leaders with better mech skill so any mechanized unit it doesn't have to be a panzer it doesn't have to be tanks it could be anything that's motorized this mech skill there's all sorts of checks for that how far they can move how many trucks you lose how many tanks you lose uh, how well they fight uh, when they do fight, this mech skill goes into that. And the infantry, same idea, but it's for ground troops. It's for the boots on the ground, right? And so, you know, he is an infantry commander. If you're looking at the L-Core, the L-Core is generally, you know, it's infantry divisions. You see here the attached units are all infantry divisions. And so he is better at... Uh, at infantry type functions which you might expect whereas let's go find some panzers that's always fun um by this point in the war in 43 it's a little harder to find them but here's some panzers out here okay fifth panzer division it's connected to the 53rd corps all right, so we've got the 53 Corps here, which is part of the 2nd Panzer Army. This is being led by Closner. I can tell you this is not the kind of commander you want for a Panzer group. Uh, well, I say Panzer group, a pa Panzer Corps uh, at only a 5.2. But let's go look at him a little closer. He is a 6, 5.55, pretty, I mean, if it's one to nine, average is 4.5. I always think of five as being average, especially as the Germans, you should round up a little bit because they do have much better commanders. He's a five mech and a six, six infantry. This is an absolutely terrible commander to have uh, at the head of a Panzer Corps. Um, and you see here, dismissal cost. At this point, we're not able to click on that. I think it's because we just started this uh this scenario uh, looking back here at the second panzer army this is part of schmidt is now leading the second panzer rudolf schmidt he's four five seven seven he's a six six now normally you're going to want that mech score as high as you can get now how do you know where these commanders are how do you replace them how does all of that work um fourth army Heinrichi. It could be that we can't replace them on the first turn here, and I'll go back to our grand scenario and do that. But before I do that, let's go to the commander's report. And up here on the tabs, you can see leaders, okay? And this, lead, this lists every commander you have. Now, I've been talking exclusively about the Germans. You also have Hungarian, the Hungarian units... The Slovakian units, the Romanians, the Czech, uh, the Italians, the Czechs, they all work exactly the same when it comes to command. Okay, so everything that I'm saying here is applicable. Now, when you look at your commander's report under the leaders tab, this shows you all the leaders you have. If they are currently commanding a unit, it tells you that here. It tells you, of course, their nationality and their rank. Now, this is what we talked about, right? So GM, GL, G, GO, GFM, Field Marshal, okay? So like Ernst Busch is a general Field Marshal for us. He's commanding the 16th Army at this point. He could command OKH because he is a Field Marshal. He has that ability to do that. Um, but currently we have them at the 16th army. Now you can go look at all their stats, political, 
okay, Morale Initiative Administrative, Mech Infantry Air Naval. So let's click on Mech and sort it that way. Not that way, let's do it this way. And you'll see here for Mech Heinz Guderian, no surprise there, right? Uh, kind of the consummate Panzer General. He's got a nine for Mech. He's also got good admin, good initiative, good morale, He's not quite so political, and that's why he's not currently leading a unit. Uh, he liked to talk back at Hitler quite often. He thought it was very foolish that his second panzers had not been allowed to uh, advance on to Moscow and had been ordered to turn south to help Army Group South, which was having a hard time cracking Kiev. Uh, and because of that, and, you know, believe me, there was a lot more that went into it, uh, but he was eventually relieved of his command. Now, he is still available. He has not been executed. Um, you could try to, you know, put him in a unit. We could try to replace. Uh, again, you know, we really can't do that on the first term of, the, of this scenario, it seems. Uh, but we'll go back to the other scenario here in a minute. Oh, that reminds me. Down here, while you're looking at your commanders, you can see victories and defeats. You can see restrictions. Now he is being restricted to ground. Well, that's interesting. Okay, let's go back to our commander report. Let's look at Herman Hoth. He's also being restricted to ground. He, they are not going to allow him to take over an air unit. <laughs> you can't just take these really good generals and uh, say, oh, by the way, we want you to uh, now start running the Luftwaffe, right? Uh, here is maybe my, uh, well, you know, it's not the proper term to say most favorite. This is my most respected German general, Eric von Manstein. Uh, his running defense in the South uh, was really something. Um, and the Second Battle of Kharkov, Anyway, you can read more about von Monstein, but he's got amazing skills as well. Again, like Guderian, his lowest skill rating is political, which maybe hurt him at some points. Uh, but, you know, Hitler did lean on him to be the fireman. Wherever he had a problem, he would lean on von Monstein. He eventually ended up down at Army Group South uh, trying to stem the tide down there. But morale, initiative, admin, mech and infantry he's just a, a an amazing commander he is currently at army group south so you can always see what are they doing now he is a field marshal um, and then you can see the max command they can have high command okay so he could be the head of okh if we so desired it now why would we have someone like von monstein up at okh okay the reason is, is when you have a headquarters like this, there are all of those roles that the game is doing, I quote unquote role. It's like it's rolling dice, see, seeing if it's passing tests. Uh, they're leader command checks, okay? If this commander fails, it will kick up to the next commander, and that commander will get a chance to try to save that role all right, it will get a chance to try to pass that test for this commander. If this commander fails, it goes up to, in this case, it would be the army group commander. He will then get a chance to pass those roles, and then eventually it will go all the way to OKH. Now, every time that that happens, there's less and a less of a chance of it passing, but the higher rated commander you have up there you know, that does help you, right? Of course it does. Uh, so let's just take initiative. And let's say that uh, here we have Mattenclot. And we look at Mattenclot. His initiative is a five. Well, let's say that we roll, you know, something and he does not pass. We roll a, a uh, seven, okay? Or the I say we, like we're going to be rolling dice. But the game rolls a seven. When the game rolls a seven, he fails. Then it kicks up to the next guy. But the next guy, it will be rolling a one to 20 die. All right. And so the next guy up, 
Um, so this is the 43rd Army Detachment here would be Kempf. Okay, well, let's go look at Kempf. Kempf for initiative is a 6. Now, Kempf has a 6 out of 20 chance. Let's say he doesn't pass. We go to the next one up, and let's say that person's an 8. Well, that person has an 8 out of 40 chance, okay? And so... Yes, it does matter, but because of that, the way it's structured, I find that you want to keep your best commanders down at the army or corps level. That's where they have the best chance at really doing or making a difference. Um, so let's look at Army Group South. We've got von Monstein here. Uh, okay, I would actually prefer he be down the head of an army really prefer he be down leading a panzer corps, okay, or a panzer group. Uh, that's where I try to keep my best generals at the group or slash army level or at the core level. As they get up here, as they get up to higher levels, what you're really looking for is admin skill because that admin skill, uh, let's go up to OKH. I don't remember uh that's now zietzler okay he's only a 5.6 uh but his admin skill is an eight so if you think about it and you know that's kind of logical when you think about it back here at okh it doesn't really in some respects matter how good of his his initiative is or keeping people's morale up because he's not down with the troops he's up here trying to move trains from point a to point b and so it really gets down to his admin skill okay um and so this commander's report is very very powerful you can go in here and look for anything what are their you know max command what are their restrictions um you know uh, let's look at air that's something we haven't really talked about and uh lundquist looks like a good air general uh, or commander he's finnish ac his rank is uh, hey you can pronounce that that's finnish i do not speak finnish uh and this is why i should not call them generals uh they are commanders but here's jarl lundquist pretty good uh stats there but he's great in the air and he should be and he is head of the finnish air command uh and they report to the finnish high command and i'm not going to get into air units until we do the whole air section where i will uh, but their command structures are treated much the same way you can click on any of them and just see how close they have to be and see who their command unit is here we see the finnish high command here um, and that will command generally your higher order air units or air headquarters i should say okay um let's get out of this scenario and go back to our bitter end scenario because i want to show you how to change a commander and we can do that off the start okay um i know a lot of players that actually change okh right at the start because Franz Halder um, is not very good. <laughs> he's not good politically, he's not good with moral, he's not good with initiative. But really those roles are, uh, does, you know, political, that's fine. That's why it only costs three to replace him at the top. Uh, but morale and initiative, his mech and infantry, just don't matter that much up here because he's got such a remote chance of passing those tests for you know, let's say a core commander that fails them, that really what matters is his admin. So I like Halder here. Halder's got a nine admin. He's not very political. Uh, he may eventually get sacked as the war turns. He probably will. That will be out of our control. But for now, that nine admin skill, I'm fine to keep that for Halder. Hey, look, the, if we have just perfect commanders everywhere, we would get rid of them because they would, you know, if somebody has an eight morale, they've got an eight out of 40 chance as opposed to a four out of 40 chance of saving, you know, one of these core headquarters for a morale check. Uh, but it's just not that 
it's not enough of a difference to get rid of a nine admin for me unless we have to. All right. Um, now let's go look at some other commanders here that we have down here. Now I know that down here in the fourth Panzer group, we have some really good Panzer commanders. Reinhardt is good. He is a uh, 7.0. Here you have von Monstein is head of the 56th Panzer Corps. Um, you know, we can go look at von Monstein again. You know, those are that that's that's what you're talking about right there. Um, but let's look at some guys that maybe aren't as good, like Brockdorf Allfelt. OK, he's part of the 16th Army. He's commanding the second quarter or the second corps headquarters. He's just not very good. Let's click on this. All right. Head of two core. He's a five, five, six, five. Luckily, he's, you know, at least he's a six at infantry, which is not terrible. And his morale and initiative aren't terrible. He's basically average. But for the German army, maybe a little below. So let's talk think about dismissing him hit here on whoa did not mean to do that ah you saw a double click there man i had set that up so beautifully too well we're just gonna go and not really care uh materna is terrible um let's go look at materna again at least he's a six for infantry so it's you know he's not as terrible as i made it sound that three mech hurts him but he's head of uh, a headquarters, let's go look at who their units are, their infantry divisions. So all we're worried about is what he can do for infantry. All right, uh, but dismissal costs, let's hit on that. It's gonna cost us six to get rid of him. And you can see here, plus six. So to get rid of or dismiss him is always gonna cost a base of six and then depending on who we want to replace him with, this is the AP that it's going to cost for this new leader, all right? And this is everyone that would be eligible to take his place. As you see, some of them already have commands, like von Monstein already leads the 56th Panzer. Okay, well, we don't want to take him from a very important unit, kind of a spearhead unit to Leningrad, and put him down here at the you know, the 20th Corps and the 9th Army for uh, no reason, right? And so you can look down here in political, morale, initiative, administrative. These are their staff ratings, combat ratings, okay? Then you can see them here, mech, infantry, air, naval. So let's look down the infantry. And, you know, you can see, let's look for somebody that does not have a current command. How about Strecker? Strecker is going to cost us 10 total points to take over here, but let's go ahead and pick Strecker, and now Strecker is the head of the 20th Corps. Okay, now let's go to a, a unit that's a little higher up the food chain. So let's say we're mad at Guderian, all right? Although he may cost a little too much to replace. How much? 11. Well, we're going to have to pick somebody three or below because we've only got 14 AP points left. But his dismissal cost would be 11. Now you see the people that could actually take his place here. All right. We can look through here and look for some mech guys. Now you see some of the people underneath him that lead Panzer Corps. You know, they're good at mech as well. So let's just say we're going to give this command to Kempf. Now look what happens. So Kempf is the head of the 48th Panzer Corps. All right. The 48th Panzer Corps is going to need a leader. Now remember when I said at the start of this episode, you have those general majors down there that do not currently have a command. It's possible the game's going to pull one of them or the GLs up to take over command of this core. We will not have control over that. The game will automatically promote someone and we'll see that message. So let's pick Kemp and see what happens. And you'll see Modal now has taken command of that core. Um, and so Kemp is now 
leading the second panzer group and let's go look for modal all right so this is i need to hit shift z so we can see what it leads uh i think it was what the 48th we'll find modal very quickly here uh hold on sorry here we go there we go the headquarters lemelson schroth who's terrible verschwagen uh where did modal take over i just saw him take that over well we're gonna have to go look for him oh i know what the deal is um okay uh kempf came from was not one it's not one of the i just assumed it was one of these headquarters but it's actually not so let's go up to our commander screen and we saw that modal took over there let's look at leaders and modal i know is ranked very well for infantry he's one of your best infantry leaders uh, there we go and let's look for him oh he's right at the top i said he's very good at infantry yeah he's a nine modal is one of your best leaders in the game he has now taken over and there you see it the 48th panzer corps okay sorry i i got a little confused there let's go look at him um this will take us immediately to the 48th panzer corps it's up in the first panzer group and you see walter modal all right, and now that makes a lot more sense. When we moved uh, Kempf in there, he, you know, I just didn't go and look where the uh, 48th was. I assumed it was part of the second Panzer Corps, but it's not, it's part of the first Panzer Corps. So now Modal has been drawn off the sidelines in here to take over this Panzer Corps, which is good because he is wonderful. He's a general lieutenant uh, so he starts only at the second rung up. He will keep moving up, generally speaking. As a matter of fact, I try to get him in the fourth army, which is the blue army here, um, as fast as I can. That's usually where I put modal. And he will eventually lead the fourth army and sometimes even move up to army group center. Um, and so that's how that works. I'm going to get out of here and do that one more time because I don't want you to be uh, confused at all. And I, I think I got a little slightly confused right when I couldn't figure out where he, he was. Uh, and so let's do this one more time. And since I said the fourth army group, often they pull modal up. Let's see if they'll do it here. So we've got the fourth army group. Uh, this is von Klug. We do not, and let's hit Shift Z so we can start to see who is being commanded here. Okay, let's look at this headquarters. Uh, that's Heinrichi. Eh, we don't really want to get rid of him. I'm acting like we're going to actually play out this game. That's just my OCD kicking in. Uh, Geyer is a 4.6. Okay, that's not good enough. This is the ninth core. So let's dismiss Geyer. It's only going to cost us one. He's not good politically. He's not really good at much of anything. He's someone when you start the game, you're probably going to replace uh, right off the top. So see, we could pick modal here if we wanted to. He's a nine on the ground. Now modal and Rendulic are two of your very best generals. You see, Rundulik here is going to cost you 21 points, uh, action points to get him up and going. What you, when you see something like this, you kind of want the game to pull Rundulik up. All right. Uh, the reason it's costing 21 is he is that lowest rank, so he is not quite ready to lead anything. But you're just at at some point they're going to have to come up, and when they do. Uh, word of caution when these guys come up not that you have uh, control over it necessarily but when they come up there is a dice roll to see if they lose any of their leadership stats okay so it's very possible if rendulic gets called up that 
you uh, he's going to go down in, let's say, administrative. And it'll say Rindulik's administrative is now seven, okay? Commanders also have a chance to increase their skills, but that is based on wins and losses generally. And for the combat stats, it's really if it's six or less, or if it's under six, I'm sorry, up to six. And for administrative things like that, it's up to eight. So if they're already at that level, they cannot gain anymore. But if you have somebody that's not uh, very good in their stats, uh, as they win battles, they have a chance to increase those stats uh, as they move up. But let's just pick Rindulik and let's see if he loses anything. He's been promoted. He had to be promoted. He's got to be at least a general lieutenant or general lieutenant um, to command a corps. So he has been moved up. Okay, great. He's now in charge of the Ninth Corps, and we didn't get a message that he had lost anything. Now, if those messages go too fast for you uh, and you didn't see one, eventually they're going to show up here on your event log. So after each turn, go read your event. It's gonna have a lot of other stuff and we're gonna go into the event log as we start to play the game. Uh, but that would show up on your event log. So again, to show one more time, let's go, we'll just replace Von Klug. Oh gosh, we just lost, because I did that, we're gonna get out of here so that we have AP left again. Exit the scenario. Luckily, this just doesn't take any time. Let's go to bitter end. All right, here we are back. And let's go to uh, the 4th Army Headquarters, right? And let's um, replace Von Klug, all right? And let's look down here. Well, we're going to have to see very quickly where the game pulls... No, that's not true. We'll replace him with, uh, who did we have up here? We had um, Heinrichi. Heinrichi's very good. Okay, let's replace Von Klug with Heinrichi. So Von Klug's going to cost 15. That stinks. Uh, here's Heinrichi, 3 of 15. Now remember, he's in the 43rd Corps. So we'll go look for the 34, or the, I'm sorry, the 43rd Corps and see who they replace him with. I say them, it's OKH, I guess, it's the game. Uh, the little men in the machine. So let's replace him with Heinrichi, okay? And what you see here, Walter Weiss was promoted and took over Heinrichi's command at the core level. Now Heinrichi's up here commanding the fourth army. Um, and if we go down back down to his old unit here, uh, which was the 43rd, you see Weiss now. Weiss has been promoted. We did not get a message that he lost any of his skills. Uh, again, it does a role for that. Um, and it's very, it's, I say it's very, it, it is, it happens quite often that they'll lose a point here or there when they take over a command that supposedly they're not ready for. Uh, but Weiss is a good guy to get start getting into your commander pool, you know, and commanding things, getting nice easy wins here early. Uh, so he he uh, you know has a chance to get promoted and get on to bigger and better things. Although, as I said many times, you want these really good commanders right down at that core level, uh, taking care of business. Okay, this has lasted a little longer than I thought, so we're going to do a whole separate e episode on support units because, again, they are really one of the top things that I get requested to cover uh, because it is a little confusing how they work, uh, but I think you know we can iron that out. I just want to tell you one more thing about command. Every command group, so let's go to a normal unit. So this is a division, and we see supply, fuel, ammunition, okay? Now let's go to a headquarter unit. So let's go to the 4th Army where we just put Heinrichi. There is no need for ammunition. Now, of course, you know, the headquarters unit has some ammunition, but it's not important enough to put on the front of the card here. So you have supply, you have fuel, 
but you have this tank here. And what is this tank? And it says 2824. Tw what this is, is how many command points this headquarters is expending. So in this case, 28. And how many command points should be its ideal maximum, which is 24. So this command headquarters is commanding more units than it should be to be uh, ideal or to be the most efficient. And this is going to cause penalties because you're over its command limit. Its command limit is 24 command points. It's at 28. And you can see this um, on every headquarters. A core headquarter is generally going to be able to command up to eight command points, uh, units that add up to eight command points. Right now it's commanding six, so that's good. But let's go back to the, well, actually, let's stay there for a second. Let's right click, attach units, okay? It's commanding three infantry divisions, all right? Every infantry division is worth two points, two command points. So three infantry divisions, six command points. Easy enough, right? And I'll tell you this, we are going to get into support next time, but support units do not count. They do not count against your command limit. They are, a, well, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. They do not count against your command limit. But let's go look at the army again here. So the fourth army, right click here. What is it commanding? Well, it's commanding cores, okay? And cores are going to be worth six. Is that right? Six. Nope. Five. Sorry. Cores are worth five and the air base is going to be worth, oh gosh, now I want to go look at this. Woo, I'm back. Okay. I had to go look at that for a second because it's just been a while since I looked at it. Uh, Soviet cores are four, and that was what was getting me confused. With the German army, this 28 actually goes all the way to the division level. So it's not so many points to command a core headquarters. It's the divisions underneath those cores. Okay, so let's get out of here for a second. Oh, whoops, I just set it up. Let's pop this back up. So these are the cores underneath the fourth army. If we go and add up the divisions, there's two of them. Okay, so that's four points. There's four of them. So that's eight points. Okay, that's 12 altogether. Then we have three here. So it's 14, 16, 18. Two here, 20 and 22, and then three here, okay? And so that would add up to 28. The air base does not count against the command limit. So divisions, every division down there counts as you move up the chain. It goes all the way down to divisions. So you can't just say, well, I have, you know, three cores, and so that's worth X amount. Because every core may be different how many divisions. And this really is a way to keep you from kind of cheating the system and, uh, you know, having uh, a, these some of these cores just stuffed to the gills and saying, well, I'm only commanding three cores, but they've got 62 divisions each in them or something. Um, and so when you look up the chain, this will increase. So core headquarters, eight. Army headquarters here you're seeing are 24. Uh, Army group center, 96. And as you can see, it's over the limit. Now you can start transferring these divisions around. So I'll just show you very quickly how we would do that. So let's say the 252nd division, actually a better example, let's go down here to this infantry division that's in a Panzer Corps, okay? So it's it's in this, you know, division 
with tanks. And those tanks are probably going to outrun it. Now, this is not something you would probably do on the first turn, but this division, I can tell you, eventually, you're going to probably attach it to this fourth army here because it's going to want to be with infantry because it's going to be moving so much slower. So as your Panzer headquarters get out here, this ground unit or these ground... Uh, these ground units, there's one here, or there's three here, there's one here that go with the panzers at the start, they're going to get left behind. And so they're going to be out of command. And you're probably going to have to reassign these. Well, how do you do that? Let's go here. When you come down here, you'll see HHQ, which is its direct superior that's its headquarters right above it. You click on that and then you'll see the admin cost to attach it to these other groups. So here we see the fourth army. Now what this tells you is how much the fourth army is already commanding. Remember, we just looked at the fourth army. It's commanding 28, okay? We can add this to it, but it's gonna put it even further over its command limit. But let's just attach that to the 4th Army. Two admin points were used, and now you see it changes its color dynamically. It's now part of the 4th Army. We've transferred that over. And there's a real kind of, it's an art. It's not a law. There aren't laws that govern it. It's a real art about getting, you know, these infantry units reassigned to better you know, reflect what they are. So these infantry units, they start off in a Panzer Corps, but they're going to get left behind by the Panzers. You want to keep them in supply, so you're going to reassign them to infantry corps. Okay, now we assign this directly to the 4th Army. We could now go, if we wanted to, and assign it to one of the corps, which is really what we'd want to do, underneath the 4th Army. All right, so... While we're here, we might as well do it. What are the corps underneath the 4th Army? Let's go look. Uh, how about the 53rd Corps? That's the one we were just dealing with. All right, so let's go to this one we just changed. Right click. Let's go look for the 53rd. That's, did I say 53rd? Yeah, I said 53rd. There it is. The 53rd Corps is right here. It's only commanding four. Now we know it's a core, so it can, can command up to eight. Um, it's going to cost us nothing to transfer it. Perfect, because we're transferring it uh, from core to core within, or we're, I'm sorry, we're transferring it down. Anytime you transfer something down, it generally is not going to cost any AP. So we're transferring it from the fourth army down to a core in the army. And it's not going to cost us any admin points. Zero admin points were used. And now you'll see it's part of the 53rd Corps, right? And so it's a little out of command, uh, but we've transferred it over to the 53rd. Um, I guess there was maybe only one other thing I wanted to show you. I mean, the we could talk about this uh, you know, for another six hours, but I think I've hit most of the high points here. Now, um, one thing I did want to show you, we had looked at air leaders before, and so uh, Kesselring is a good example. You generally want him to be with Luft, Luftlata 1, meaning it's heading north to Leningrad. He's, gonna, he's, a, he's now with Luftlata 2. Um, anyway, whatever. That's a rabbit hole in itself. I just wanted to show you that you see restrictions here. He can be a he can be a commander for either air or ground troops. Now he is an eight in the air, but if worse got to he's got great stats up here, right? If worse got to worse, you put him with an infantry unit, he could do that. Some of these guys are air only, and a lot of them are ground only. So just always keep that in mind. Um, and with that, I think we've really covered commanders. Uh, I think that, you know, we hit a lot of the high points of how it works with, you know, command points, how, how many units that uh, an army or a corps can command, kind of the command structure. Again, it's core, it's uh, divisions to cores, to armies, to army groups. 
up to OKH. You know, it's those five levels, and then you have to remember the commander levels. GM, which is not really ready to command anything. GL, G, GO, and G Field Marshal at the top. Um, then you just have to remember, you know, you don't even really have to remember it. How many hexes they have to be within uh, the command radius of their direct superior. Uh, so Fourth Army reports to Army Group Center. They have to be within 45. They're in command. The command points here, divisions are worth two. Regiments are in brigades worth one. Fortified units worth one. Uh, but generally, just remember, divisions are worth two. Okay, so this can command, you know, all other things being equal, up to 12 divisions. Uh, underneath cores, you know, it's a layer in between, but ultimately up to 12 divisions. Uh, all of the stats for the generals, remember that. Um, so next time when we come back, we're going to talk about support units. Incredibly important, but they really key off of this command structure. And so I wanted to do that first. I thought maybe we could get to it today, but as with everything else in this game, there's a lot to go over. Uh, so hopefully you've learned quite a bit. I've had a lot of fun making this one. Um, and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for uh, stopping by at Strategy Gaming Dojo.